All right, hey everybody, Tim here. Um, finishing a series that I started a little while ago. And unfortunately, it's a bit anticlimactic because you're seeing a part of the pedal board that I've been putting together. Um, but at some point, I just needed to get on with things. I had a couple of trips I needed to take. And so work got ahead of my YouTube schedule. And I do apologize if that's like horrible for you. But today I'm gonna look at the three pedals I considered uh, for the higher gain drive position on my pedal board. Um, all three of these pedals are really good. Any three of them would be proud to have that spot. Um, but I'll show you a couple sounds from each one and then explain why I chose the Benson preamp to stay on the board. Uh, today I'm using my HSS Stratocaster um, with Sir pickups um, through Two Rock Traditional Clean and a matchless. Um, I do apologize, there is a slight amount of uh, out of phaseness about these two amps um, because they're both being run through something digital. Um, if you aren't quite sure what I mean by that, uh, digital adds latency. And Dan and Mick just did a cool TPS episode, I think, uh, just this past week. Um, regarding that so you could go check it out there but anyway because both things are adding a small amount of digital latency it's impossible to have them entirely in phase what you can do is pan left and right when you want to hear the left is the is the matchless the right is the two rock uh, clean sounds are as follows starting with bridge pickup because we're spending most of our time today here As usual, it's not entirely clean, and I make no apologies for that. So let me play a few chords on each one of the pedals here first. Uh, I'll play a riff or two and then uh, get on with it. I'm going to try and not make this too long uh, because I think I have places to be and things to do today. So here we go, 1981 DRV, still I think the coolest looking pedal on earth right now. I just think they got everything right about the design. The knobs are really cool and the logo is awesome. This happens to be the white hyperfade. It reminds me of Miami Vice. Um, so this is what it sounds like. Uh, the 1981 features a drive, believe it or not, this is almost as low as the drive gets for this pedal. Um, if you crank it up. It can get crazy amounts of saturated. I personally don't use that much gain. Um, so, for me and the way that I set my amps, If I wanted more than that, I'd hit the prism. I always want to leave a little bit of room, even in my highest gain sounds, to get more. Uh, and uh, you know, the, the clone here, the Mjolnir, uh, Joey Landreth, is the solo boost uh, if I need something behind it. Okay, so there's the 1981. The 1981 is some derivative of the rat. And this rat is a 1986 rat with the LM308 chip in it, so kind of like one of the more desirable rats. I wanted to see what it was like um, because, you know, we got so many boutique pedals out on the market now, sometimes you just wonder why did we ever recreate the wheel? Do you ever feel that way? Anyway, here's what the rat sounds like. I suppose one of the reasons we reinvented the wheel was because this pedal does not have a light to tell you that it's on, and so sometimes that's problematic. The 81 has a cut knob, the Rat has a filter, um, it's kind of a different take on Sorry, I'll try not to play and talk at the same time. It's kind of a different take on, um, uh, you know, tone circuits. Um, and it can get really, like, lots of low or high-end taken out. 
which is probably a cool sound in your bedroom, but you need some highs. Same thing with the DRV, if we go back, the cut can really, you know, and there's some cool sounds on there, you know, if you whack up the drive and you bring the cut all the way down, you get something. There's room on a track somewhere for that, but it wouldn't be how I'd set it and forget it on my pedal board. Okay, so you can hear those sounds somewhat similar, right? Like they're not in totally different environments. A little tweak here, a little tweak there. Um, the DRV is a little smoother maybe. The Rat's a little hairier, more aggressive. Um, and then we have the Benson preamp, which is not based on either of those at all. The Benson preamp, if you don't know, is um, basically the preamp section of the Benson Chimera without tubes and shrunk into a pedal. Um, so when we say things like amp in a box, that's kind of a weird term. In this particular case, it kind of fits more than usual because it's got the same tone circuit and the same circuit as the amp. So it kind of is that sound in a box. Um, and here's how I've got it set now, just to kind of get it in the same ballpark as these two. Got a fair amount more trouble going on there than I had in the other ones. Whoops, that's the bass. I'm reading it upside down. But you see, they're all kind of in the same gain land. They can all do some of the same things, you know. See, now I don't know if it went on or off. There we go. That's the kind of sound that I'm looking for, for the most part. If I uh, real quickly drop myself into detuning, like I would if I was playing something like Glorious Day, You, know, you got that big chord right at the beginning. We are in drop D. Am I close enough? So they can all do the sound. So why did I choose the Benson preamp over the other two? Okay, so why did I choose the Benson preamp? Um, with all the pedals I chose on the board, uh, the big issue for me was versatility. I wanted them to be able to do more than one thing. On a given Sunday morning, the average number of songs we do is five. So I have a little bit of ability to make any one of them a bit of a specialty pillow, a uh, pillow, yeah, right, pedal. Um, and I think these particular pedals, you know, the ability to change the kind of high gain tone that you're getting was a big benefit on the Benson. Um, so let me demonstrate that real fast in a couple ways. You already heard kind of this basic sound that it's doing. It's a cool sound. But like the other sound I really like on this is if you, it can get almost fuzzy and almost into that like amp blowing up territory.
okay? Almost fuzzy, um, which I like. Um, I also like that it can do lower gain stuff really well, which I think the two, the Rat and the 1981 have that in there too, but if I'm playing uh, a, a more American style amp and I need a little bit more chime out of it, So let's demonstrate that. I'm going to mute the match list for a second. Okay, so without the Benson preamp now, here's the sound I've got. I mean, I could fake some chimey stuff with that, but this, Compared to here's the matchless uh, with a little bit of boost. Where does that get us? I mean the matchless is nicer, but it should be, because it's a full amp and it's a very expensive amp. But the Benson gets me into that territory if I need it for a song. So if I go play somewhere and I take my pedal board, I don't take my amps, um, I can make a, a, a Fender style amp feel a bit more like my Matchless. Um, and then I can slot in the Protein, which is why it made into the sort of medium gain section. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna demo this pedal right now, but um, but it can do gainy stuff too. It gives me another flavor. So I have a lot of versatility and I felt like the Benson did what I needed it to do in the high gain territory. Most of the time that's kind of how it's set up but it gave me some options when it came to what I needed my board to do. And for me, this board is about the ultimate. I'll spend some time going through the rig as a whole. Um, once I get it dialed in a bit more, I just finished wiring it a few days ago. I played the weekend with it um, and I'm still getting familiar with things, but you can expect demos to come of the Mako D1 which is uh, my split to stereo um, of the Tempest, which is kind of my always on reverb at this point. It does so much more than that, but it's there. Um, the Tempest and the Ventress are running in the loop of the HX Stomp. Anyway, I need to do a whole other video for that, so let me not belabor the point. If this is one of your first times or first time watching video, thanks for stopping by, I really appreciate it. Um, if you have a moment to subscribe, like, comment, I love um, interacting with people on social media about guitar gear. That's why I'm here doing it. I don't have any illusions of being rich and famous, but um, I think it's, it's cool to be able to talk through some of these things with people who care. Um, and uh, my wife doesn't care. Well, she cares about me. She doesn't care about my gear. So um, you guys are the next best thing. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, my name's Tim, and uh, this has been another desktop demo. Peace, everybody.